So this video is going to be about socialism, three things that I think are important to consider when discussing why socialism works and doesn't work. I wanted to try to title this in a way that didn't seem like this big production and an answer to a big difficult question. It's really not that difficult. I can't make this any more salacious and provocative than what it actually is. But with that being said, this is gonna be my last video. So welcome to it. And thank you for everyone who's been coming to this channel for the last uh, really 10 years. I started making YouTube videos October of 2014 then I changed this channel to be what most of you all know it to be for the last like three years in 2021 August that's when I like changed my channel name and started making more commentary video essay type things thank you for everyone who's been along on this journey a lot of you have been great supporters if you would like to keep up with my work you can become a free member or a low tier member on patreon and we'll be there for some time I might even create a website for the mutual aid network that we're working on over there instead of using patreon so everything will happen in time and then maybe later on this year I will start developing the things that I need to be a keynote speaker and a workshop facilitator but all in all I'm gonna be taking my time and I do not want to post videos anymore indefinitely if you do end up seeing me post something on this channel it will be in relation to the mutual aid network and how it's been going because that is something very pivotal in the world right now and I will really need to share any findings and helpful information as it comes. You can also find me on Instagram. My page is public right now. I'm thinking about making it private. I don't know. I'm definitely changing the ways that I interact with any public facing platform and really seeing what the limits are and possibilities are if it is private. And if you want to know more about why I guess I don't want to post videos anymore, I'll try to do some sort of synopsis at the end of this. But in the first part of the socialist lifestyle video, I give a pretty clear statement. So that's another thing. When you create videos, no matter how clear you think you are, it's never enough. I definitely want to stop that like um rat race next thing so in this video of course i can't say everything and in my past videos it's not like the safest thing or the best thing to just say everything unfiltered about socialism and communism and social change certain things have to be said in private and vetted spaces and this will never be a private and vetted space so yes if there are certain things that i don't mention just remember that we are very much living in a time where we need to be careful about what we are saying publicly. I mentioned in my previous video that when I am sponsored, half of the money that I receive will be going to different crowdfunding requests that people have, and I will decide that by coming to a consensus with people on Patreon. Yes, this video is sponsored, and there's just a whole bunch of things that I'm trying to tackle and wrap up in this video. So please just be patient with me. So the amount will be around $1,250 and I will receive it in a little over 30 days. And then in that time, we'll see where that money can go. And then the other half will just be used to take care of any living expenses that I have. This video is sponsored by Delete Me. Delete Me will remove your data from hundreds of data broker websites. As someone who shares their political beliefs online, it is important for me to take these precautions for not only myself, but my family. Sharing my political beliefs online make me a target. And if the people around me are not making sure that their information is safe, my information will be leaked as well. And all in all, we have the right to stay private and make sure our personal data is protected. Delete Me works by collecting your information through a series of prompts, and they begin to remove your information from a series of websites. They also have a section on their dashboard where they ask if certain information is related to you in order to narrow down where other pieces of your information or your family information is on the internet. You will receive a removal report within seven days and this process will be reoccurring throughout the year to give you reports on where your data has been removed. On your dashboard, there will be a report for different periods of time. I usually forget to see if these services are international. With Delete Me, you can see if you will be covered if you are not 
not located in the United States. You can get 20% off US consumer plans when you go to joindeleteme.com slash fab20. You can also use fab20 at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash fab20. Thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring this video. Now we can start getting into the three ways I understand why socialism does and does not work. So the first thing currently is how the United States destabilizes countries and how other Western countries also participate. So the first thing we can do is answer like, what are Western countries? Just by Googling it, Western countries also referred to as the Western world generally encompass Europe, North America, and Oceania or Oceania. This one website, worldpopulationreview.com, really breaks down the term and they go through so many different ways like the origin of the, the term Western world, the Cold War West, the rich West, the modern meaning of the Western world. Because a lot of the time when people say the Western world, they're not necessarily talking about like every country in South America or Central America, even though that's right under North America. The connections to the United States sometimes can be considered the Western world. This idea of who's fighting for democracy. Currently, so many places around the world are being destabilized by the United States, but specifically, some places are referred to as something I learned as Swana and Mina. So Swana is a decolonial and geographical term that represents the various communities located in Southwest Asia and North Africa. Another term to describe the region is the Middle East and North Africa, Mina. So this is how to specifically say um, these areas. And to also go back to how these Western um, powers destabilize other countries and in that process they are doing that to get rid or stop socialism. One way I also have learned to understand socialism is that if the word didn't exist it would be the practice that many indigenous people have done to protect their land and to make sure that everyone's needs are taken care of and that the work people do everyone shares autonomy over it and the benefits from their work equally. Many indigenous groups across the world have protected the land and shared resources and Western countries take away their ability to say no when it comes to extracting those resources. And then once the Western world gains access to those resources in forcible ways, they use it to make capitalistic gains. So this is not me trying to say all indigenous people are socialist, but when many people try to practice prioritizing the land, not exploiting resources and other human beings, when people try to use resources as needed, this does not go hand in hand with how capitalism works. So currently, when you look at what's happening to Palestinians, one of many reasons why this area is under siege and being heavily bombed is to have complete control over the resources in this area. I believe Palestine is known to have a lot of natural gas reserves or whatever. In the area, there's like the Suez Canal, right? Like all of these connections. The United States has an invested interest in making sure Israel exists to have their hand in taking resources from the area. I think Israel is like one of the largest um, exporters of like diamonds and they don't even have any diamond mines in that area. And there you can go on and on. This is what the Palestine Laboratory, the book talks about. That's one of the reasons. So when we are saying why capitalism is so bad, it's not just because prices are high. We just are so mad that we have to work we want a cute teddy bear from Costco like no capitalism is bad because in order for the raw materials and the labor to be had to create things and make money people are being ethnically cleansed people are being displaced from land people are being starved murdered and and this has happened to in the United States what is Turtle Island that is now being called the United States. This has happened to many native people on this land. Western powers are enslaving people. And when they're not doing those things directly, they are putting weapons and money into like groups that will further cause chaos and destabilize 
other places so that there is no like calm healthy people to stand their ground and say i don't want you to take the gold from this land i don't want you to take the cobalt and all of this stuff we live on this land and we don't want you to come take these resources for your 50 million iphone releases for your 50 million cars that you all don't need like when you are wondering oh why is there so much chaos in this area those people have to get it together no, the place you probably live, if you live in a Western country, your tax dollars are going to make sure there's nothing but chaos and confusion in these places. So the people of these lands can't come to the conclusion of they just want to live a healthy, normal life that honors and protects disabled people, that makes sure everybody has shelter and a meal, that makes sure everyone is safe and there's no more gender based violence like this is what naturally as human beings we want to come to, but the white supremacists continue to do all of this for greed and power. A lot of people think socialism doesn't work because people are naturally greedy and selfish. It is not true that our society is just made up of selfish people that are greedy and that this the inevitable is that like, the powerful and greedy will rise or that's all that exists. We wouldn't even have public school teachers right now if that was true. What is the incentive <laughs> to be a teacher in general, if not for forcibly, because you won't be able to pay your bills, so you go um, against your own will, but two, you care about the education of students despite not being paid enough, despite not being treated with respect by a variety of people in the school industry, including the, t the students sometimes. You have a lot of people that like continue to show up despite it not being in their best interest. People want self-determination. So that's one of the reasons why when people are talking about liberation and people are talking about um, revolution, they talk about the right to self-determination. Because people who live in a variety of places around the world have not been able to determine what happens in their own lives and on the land that they actually care about preserving. And I think that's a huge thing with climate change is that this destabilizing of so many people around the world who are not white this is causing irreparable damage to the land the level of mining and extraction for profit is ruining the planet i wouldn't be surprised if all of the bombs that have been dropped on the gaza strip has had ripple effects the different weird stuff we've been experiencing all over the world in the last three months is because of that there are droughts in so many different places around the world because of this stuff and then we act confused time after time like literally the hurricane uh, hurricane katrina wouldn't have been so devastating if the wetlands were preserved if all that the colonizers did to uh degrade the land didn't happen when hurricanes come it wouldn't have been that destructive because nature has had so many things in place like i shouldn't even have to be becoming an environmentalist for all of this like it's like we have all these different separate words for things that like people just did and prioritized so we're gonna take a quick kind of break uh, to talk about an initiative. I'm in this program that shares a bunch of like initiatives on like climate change, economic justice, healthcare, and whatnot. And I'm not gonna stray too far from the corruption of the United States in talking about this. This one is gonna be about healthcare. Um, so actually around August 9th of 2023, there have been some reports about how 15 million people are expected to lose their Medicaid coverage during the redetermination process. When people were enrolled in health insurance plans during the pandemic, you didn't have to like re-enroll all the time. Once the federal emergency ended, people had to start doing that again and did not know. So many people might be under the risk of losing their coverage just because their information isn't up to date. The federal government ensured that people enrolled in Medicaid could maintain their coverage for the duration of the COVID-19 public health emergency. Now with the public health emergency officially over, wrongfully deemed um, by the government. States are restarting their process of periodically redetermining eligibility for Medicaid. So with that happening, so many people are running the risk of losing their coverage 
because of administrative reasons, meaning they may not have a correct address on file. They have to submit a renewal application and any other kind of procedural issues that you could imagine. And then there can also be certain issues with states that have not expanded Medicaid eligibility under the Affordable Care Act. This is something that I recently learned about from podcasts like the Death Panel. So the initiative that I'm gonna be reading is how people have recently been signing up for Medicaid. So especially given that so many people are getting sick from either COVID, RSV, what else, the flu. The window of open enrollment for healthcare just closed and the number of people who signed up for healthcare through the Affordable Care Act's marketplace hit a record high this season for the third year in a row. More than 21 million selected a plan between November 1st and mid-January. The total for the latest open enrollment period marks a 30% increase from a year ago. This includes 5 million new signups and more than 16 million people with 2023 Affordable Care Act coverage. Some of the biggest increases in enrollment was tied to a reform law known as Obamacare, which occurred in states that have yet to expand Medicaid to more low-income people. Texas had the largest increase in enrollees from 2023 to 2024 at nearly 1.1 million. Florida was second with an increase of more than 986,000 people. There are still discussions of getting rid of Obamacare, but there are a lot of people that rely on the coverage and are going to continue to rely on that coverage and there are states where lawmakers are regularly railing against affordable care the affordable care act and we can see that that is clearly not within the best interest of the citizens in that state okay so that was my final initiative reading to fulfill my grant because i mentioned it in my last two videos and i posted youtube shorts to help me fulfill that so that's why this is my last video because i no longer have to do any more requirements. Now we're gonna go into the second reason why socialism works or doesn't work. And this is a reason that I saw on a TikTok that I thought would be worth mentioning. So according to Marx, the way to gradually convert from capitalism to communism was with a bridge called socialism. In socialism, before the workers had direct control over the means of production, the means of production would be controlled by a democratic government, which itself is controlled by the workers, as opposed to private ownership, which is the case in capitalism. The point being that capitalism encourages competition, which encourages exploitation. So to remove that competitive edge, socialism would have workers collectively working for the greater good and equally sharing in that greater good. Think of things like universal health care, public schools. Everybody contributes and everybody benefits. Not just by personally using those services, but by a healthier and more educated society that you get to live in. And truly, in a nutshell, that's socialism. Now, once socialism can be established and private ownership can be abolished, the next step is total collective ownership and not just of production, but of all aspects of the economy and society. With the end goal of a classless, moneyless, and stateless society where everyone works towards the same goal of being happy, healthy, and free. You do what you can to contribute and you take only what you need. No billionaires, but no one's dying of starvation. Now, you might be thinking that sounds great, but why hasn't it ever worked out? And I'm going to explain why we've never had a communist country in the fate flaw with socialism. In fact, what we've seen over the last century is that power-hungry sociopaths are very good at convincing people who would benefit the most from socialism that they can individually solve their problems instead, or in other words, fascism. And what almost always happens is that the more power a government is able to control in an effort to achieve socialism, the more likely it is that power-hungry corrupt officials who are part of the owner class are able to get into office by lying and cheating, and they get their friends in the positions of power, and now you don't have a socialist government. But instead, you have a cacistocracy, which is a government that's run by the worst, least qualified, and most unscrupulous citizens. So the real problem with socialism is power-hungry capitalist corruption. Also, America invades every single country that's ever tried. So that account is called Good Morning Bad News, I believe. Yeah, the video was really fast. I've never heard the term cacistocracy before, and there are very similar terms to it, like about like greedy people leading people or the least qualified leading people. That can be a reason as to why socialism has not been a more widely accepted thing, because people will try to lead people under the guise of socialism but they do not have the skills to one not participate in hierarchical forms of power i think that's one thing to be aware of especially as more talks of people wanting socialism is okay who is also being on the lookout for people who are going to try to prey on our like starvation for a new world that actually gives us dignity and autonomy who's going to take that and try to abuse it and manipulate us well in the book socialism seriously that i've mentioned before it has also talked a little bit about um 
the USSR and some of the issues there. There are like really good footnotes for more information to read about that history. Just do not believe anything that the United States tells you about another country or the history of another country and the leaders and whatnot. Nine times out of 10, if you look more into it, the information is going to be way too hard um, to regurgitate like in simple terms, you're gonna realize it's pretty nuanced. And I say that because when I was reading Socialism Seriously and I did get to the chapters where the author went more in depth in like communism and socialism in like Russia, I was like, oh wow, this is a little bit more information and things that happened that I would have never thought. I actually could read an, ex an excerpt. I'm not gonna go off my head right now, but here are some quotes from the Russia segment from the revolution chapter. To say that a revolution that saw tens of millions participating in mass Soviet democracy became a monstrous dictatorship because of one man's ruthless thirst for power is a nursery rhyme version of history. The defeat from within the Soviet Union was a decade long process in which the Soviets stopped functioning in conditions of war and mass poverty and the Bolshevik party was left in charge of a state presiding over a devastated economy. As the party had to make more and more emergency decisions, often with the fate of the revolution on the line, the revolutionary dynamic of the people fighting for their own liberation completely shifted to a small number of ex-revolutionaries fighting for their own position as the leaders of the country. The outcome of the Russian Revolution is a confirmation of the basic Marxist idea that socialism has to come from the workers themselves. But it was convenient both for Stalin and his fellow communist leaders, quote unquote, and for their enemies in the quote unquote free world to assert the opposite that this new type of dictatorship ruling in the name of the people was what actually existing socialism looked like in practice. So what that part is saying that the free world rather tell the story that Stalin's dictatorship is what socialism looks like rather than years prior to Stalin taking control, that was a successful revolution where socialism was attempting to thrive. So here's some more on why the revolution struggled. There were more uprisings to come in Germany and elsewhere, but no successful revolutions, which made the eventual failure of the Russian revolution inevitable, as the Bolsheviks knew. They had always said that socialism couldn't succeed if it was isolated in Russia. And that was before the country was wrecked by World War I and then invaded by foreign powers after the revolution. And for anyone confused, the Bolsheviks are a communist party that helped during the Russian Revolution. And Stalin was in the Bolshevik party, um, as was Lenin. And to my knowledge, Lenin is a really popular communist figure as where Stalin is not. Stalin maneuvered his way into a dictatorship and launched a historic reign of terror, featuring slave labor camps and mass executions of political enemies. Every gain of the revolution was reversed. Art and writing were vigorously censored, homosexuality and abortion were criminalized again, and women were told that being a good communist meant having lots of children for Mother Russia. Here are some things that the Russian Revolution achieved before Stalin took over power. Within weeks, the Soviet government had called for an immediate end to Russia's participation in the war and legalized divorce, abortion, and homosexuality, narrowly beating the United States on these progressive reforms by around 50 years or so. The world had never seen a government like this. So yeah, socialism and communism is not a dictatorship and the history of revolutions shouldn't be overly simplified because we don't get to see how we actually relate to them if we were to learn them in their fullness. So there is a lot that I left out from that chapter, but you will just have to read it to find out. Now the third and final thing of if socialism doesn't work or does it work. So I found a podcast called Actually Existing Socialism and it goes into a bunch of examples on how socialism works and is thriving today in a bunch of places. And I listened to one specific episode on Laos. If you don't know about Laos, I learned about it in college. Laos has like 
the most bombs riddled all over the land from the Vietnam War that the United States dropped. It is horrific. Like kids have to take certain paths to school. The country has had to dedicate all this time and resources into finding bombs and detonating them so they don't randomly kill people. That's why one of the first episodes I clicked on was Laos because I have a little bit of knowledge about it. But they also talk about China. They talk about North Korea, I believe. So what are some of my final points for this video? Um, One is that like capitalism does not have good and bad parts. Capitalism is working exactly how it's supposed to when you are not getting paid enough when you cannot make ends meet when you're being exploited that's how capitalism is supposed to work when the rich have all this money capitalism is working how it is okay that is not the bad parts of capitalism that we need to reform capitalism is not the reason for all this innovation human beings are a lot of innovation and inventions happened before capitalism so when we talk about capitalism needing to fail its failure is necessary. The good and bad parts about socialism, socialism doesn't have the same bad parts that capitalism has. We're talking about a society that does not have exploitation, that does not have people paying for housing, food, basic needs, that do not have certain people benefiting from other people's labor. The bad parts about socialism isn't even socialism itself, it's more so the stigma for it, which one thing I really liked in the Socialism Seriously book is the author talked about if we need to call it something else, we could figure out something else to call it. But either way, this is what we're trying to go for globally, these types of ideologies, whether it's under a different name because of the stigma of socialism and communism. And when socialism fails, it's not an indictment on socialism itself. It failed because countries have been sanctioned, embargoes against them. All these weapons have been given to other groups to overthrow the socialist movement happening like socialism doesn't fail just because it doesn't fail in a vacuum this is all public information honestly a lot of people will still be alive if they weren't influential people in different communities that started to preach that the resources on this land should actually be split amongst and like dictated by the people who live here and care for the land like this is what was getting people taken off from this world. Another thing that I wanted to briefly talk about is the Party for Socialism and Liberation. So I've been like um, researching them a little bit. I heard of them in October and that was mainly because uh, PSL chapters were doing, are doing a lot of work when it comes to protesting for Palestinian liberation. And with that, a lot of us were made aware that Claudia and Karina are running for president and they would be like the first socialist candidates or something like that or one of the first so i will link this document that goes over all of the like red flags and bad things that have happened within the party for socialism and liberation different chapters specifically and i believe uh claudia or karina may have been in Involved or referenced in some of these things so they had a no of some of these things but when it comes to Claudia and Karina specifically I think when you go to their website and you um, read a lot of the stuff that they've posted it's very like you know good general things about socialism when it comes to their campaign their campaign doesn't seem that great they do not seem like two candidates that exemplify the type of culture of socialism meaning putting a disability justice in the forefront or even something they even care about their responses to covid have been horrible they don't know anything about covid and you can see that in how they speak about it because when someone is learning about covid they speak about it with a lot of knowledge and they wear a mask without being told like if someone has to tell you to wear a mask you need to do your research on why so you could fully understand it because you won't be able to wear a mask without knowing why you need to so and that's why they don't because they don't know anything about covid they also don't know how to do public speaking they go on tiktok live and just go off the top of their head trying to answer really serious questions they fit the bill of a typical politician that we don't like uh speak to the public in edu uneducated and defensive ways so i hope they change if they change i will definitely love to see that i think that's like a part of socialist culture is to show that you can change you can be held accountable and i don't think they have done that yet 
to the public. Another thing too is that a lot of people, and this is not specifically about Claudia and Karina, but this could be about PSL or any like socialist groups that start to pop up, is that there are people who use radical beliefs to harm other people, to make their way into certain communities of people who, you know, are very caring and open and to be harmful. I think a lot of us have to show that we can notice when people are bad faith actors, when we can notice that people don't know enough information and we would like to get them up to speed if they can be humble enough yeah that's just one thing with PSL that I'm just very wary about is that I really want them to exemplify more than just saying the popular talking points of socialism but how do you actually move in a way that is different to the status quo and fight white supremacy culture at every way it can pop up and I will put some links to what even is white supremacy culture because you know that will be really good to look into and yeah I think like having to beware of a lot of things that's just what makes society and living so hard. Survival is hard as humans. That's why so many people end up in cults and whatnot because it's so hard to figure out what is it that we are doing in this earth floating in a endless universe. Like, what are we doing? How do we do life right? That's why people go to religion and anything that can help them understand what is going on. Currently, a lot of us are living in this like quasi comfort of like the United States way of survival. And a lot of people aren't making it. Some people are somewhat comfortable, meaning they have a bed to sleep in at night and a warm shower every day. And that leaves people really complacent into like how harmful our current society is and how much it needs to change. Like, I don't care, I be, you know, regardless, I'm trying to get myself to a place and I feel like I'm somewhat there that if there is societal collapse or as society is collapsing, I don't care where I lay my head at, it will be on a satin pillowcase. I don't care where I lay my head at or have to shower, I want to have my certain things and a nice little baggie to be everywhere with me to keep me sane. If there is going to be chaos and confusion, I want some sensory earplugs in so it's just not that loud. That's all I'm trying to get myself ready for because it's inevitable. But aside from that tangent, some of the reasons why I am leaving YouTube. One, it, all of the interactions on the internet with random people is really starting to get to me. It's really starting to get to me. There's but so long I'm gonna be able to be nice on these platforms because I'm getting upset by everything and everybody. Everything is setting me off. So yeah, even the people that claim they listen to me and love my videos, I'd be like, how do you listen to me? But you are saying something that I've said multiple times. You ask me a question on something I said multiple times. Like, I know you have to have the like patience and endurance to continue to ask or answer questions that are ridiculous, that I think are ridiculous, I don't have the, the patience for that anymore. I wanna be in a space where I, when I talk to people, I like I'm, I know who I'm talking to um, most of the time, 99% of the time. Also, I wanna be able to rewatch my own videos and figure out what I would like to change, how my thoughts have changed. I just don't have the time to like watch all my videos and redo videos and I don't even know how any of that plays out on YouTube. So yeah, I just don't wanna, I wanna take time to learn more and have better thoughts and put together bodies of work that are better that I feel like can impact smaller groups of people rather than a huge group of random people. Like all making videos do is kind of like, yes, of course benefit um, others by watching the information I put out there, but they also are just a way for me to stay afloat, stay living. And like when once that's the main thing, it compromises my ability to take my time and give people even better information. I just need more time to build back up my patience in order to be interacting with actual people to survive with. You know, I need my patience. I need my empathy. I need my compassion. And I don't want random people on the internet to deteriorate that completely, <laughs> okay? A lot of my videos are getting unlisted. Like if you, <laughs> after you watch this, if you haven't noticed, you'll probably go look at my channel and I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> If there are like three videos left, I'm so sorry. If I do end up taking all my videos down, they will all be in a like unlisted playlist that you can find um, on Patreon for free or somewhere for free. There will be a free place to watch all my videos, but they just won't be publicly making its rounds 
on YouTube. Also, I don't want people watching me enjoying my stuff, thinking we uh, parasocial besties and you don't wear a mask and you out here saying you don't donate money to homeless people because you don't know if they're gonna use it for drugs. I don't want any of y'all just casually consuming my stuff. I can control that by no longer posting. Like if I can control not having people that like are out here being haphazard and weird from watching my videos, I'm gonna do it. I could probably think of more reasons, but uh, I think people need to stop using things like socialism, capitalism, massage noir, just any radical talking points to um, belittle these topics, to talk about things we've been talking about over and over and over again every couple of months. We need to use those things to talk about actual real life societies. More and more people can't pay their bills. More and more people can't afford their medications. More and more people are being exploited, hate work, killing themselves. Let's use these radical topics to talk about those things. Not people in pop culture who need to keep people talking about them to stay relevant. I'm not trying to keep these people relevant. I'm trying to make sure me and other people can survive another day. I think that's all I could say, really. I'm so glad you all have enjoyed the stuff that I've posted already. Um, I'll figure it out. Oh yes, I will be drastically changing my cost of living just in case anybody's worried about, oh, I'm, I'm going to make money. Look, I will do anything um, and go anywhere <laughs> to make sure that my cost of living is less and I could find um, community and whatnot. So that's what I'll also be working on. Yeah, I'll stop there and thanks for watching.